Hey, what's going on there, guys? You've officially arrived at the 420 scene, and today we got another episode of Q&A from questions that you guys have had for me. But first, show us some love and support by watching the entire video, dropping a like, subscribing, and tapping the post notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Also, be sure to join our VIP Patreon program for one-on-one -on -one grow help, tips, monthly giveaways, live streams, all that good stuff. Link will be in the description below. And also, don't forget, if you want to come and check out our grows and just chill with us, be sure to join us on Discord. Score. Link is going to be in the pin message at the bottom here. So let's get right on our Q&A. We haven't done one of these. I don't even think we did one this year. I think we did one maybe like last fall. We always used to do a Q&A like every six weeks, but you know, we got sidetracked. We had a whole bunch of other content that we came out with. Moving forward, question number one, Scott Leopard asks, what are your thoughts on companion plants? I mean, I'm not against it and I do love growing cantaloupes. You know, I used to grow tomato plants with my grandpa when I was younger. So when it comes to companion plants, Plants, the more the merrier and there are plants that act as a deterrent too for pests so it's really a win-win in my book question number two Johnny Sanchez asked I had two feminized plants in a two by four that I recently harvested and one of my plants has seeds on it is it possible it hermied or pollinated itself if so can I grow these? It could mean that it hermied or that it got just a little bit overstressed if you were struggling with your run. I know that, you know, in past grows, if I was struggling, if I was struggling, whether it's my fault or, you know, terrible genetics, you know, whichever the case may be, whether my environmental conditions were like less than stellar. When your plants reach a certain amount, like it's almost like levels, it's almost like video games. You know what I'm saying? Like once your plant leaves a certain level, like once they're at a certain level, I feel like they're gonna start spitting out seeds and and I like to call them emergency seeds. And I mean, yeah, you could run those beans that you got, but I've done this before and most of them did come out male. I only did this once, okay? After that happened, I'm like, you know what? No, I'm just gonna be buying feminized from now on. Make sure you do a quality control test. Now, you're probably wondering what's a good quality control test. And I learned this from somebody, I don't remember who, maybe it was an article I read, maybe it was a YouTuber I watched, I don't remember, but what you're supposed to do, and I've been doing this, give your beans a nice gentle squeeze and if it breaks, then you know it's going to be trash. But if it doesn't break, you're good to go. Now, I don't mean to squeeze it as hard as you possibly could. Just, you know, just a nice little light sleeve. But it's going to be good for practice if you're starting out. Hey, you're not paying anything for these beans. And if you're having problems with, like, germinating or seedling stage or something like that, you could use this as practice, you know what I'm saying? If you're not paying for these beans, you got nothing to lose. Question number three, Bay Muta Triangle asked, I'm curious how you keep your tent pest free, dust free, mold free without filtering your air out going into your tent. I'm working with closets right now and the only time that I had pest issue was growing in a basement. Nightmare of don't ever grow in basements. It's just a straight up nightmare. Unless it's like super clean and you really, really maintain it. It's also not like I'm pulling air from a swampy bug infested environment, but if you have bug issues, you can do a few things. First of all, grab yourself a bottle of Microbe Lift Mosquito Control, and the first time that you use it, mix six drops into a gallon of water, and then mix two drops every other time, and you could do this every watering. It's not gonna mess up with anything. It's pretty easy to use. It's not gonna kill, it's not gonna mess with your microbial environment, and it's gonna kill the larva or whatever bugs that you're working with, you know? So you're getting right to the root of the problem. So Microbe Lift for infantry, and probably neem oil for airborne division. Question number four, cut Buddy Green asks, can you do a run with down the earth, all purpose and rose and flower, comparing it to your experience with Guy Green? I've done a few runs with down the earth super soil recipe using, I've used stuff like the bat guano, the kelp meal, alfalfa meal, crab meal, 20% worm castings, and honestly, you get very similar results between the down to earth and the Guy Green, and I feel like I mentioned that in the recent video, I think it was the top amendments and nutrients for 2022, definitely check that out if you haven't checked it out yet. Besides the last run that we did with the guy green i did do two runs previously with the down the earth and it's great stuff and the only real difference between the down the earth and the guy green is everything is already mixed in so it's not like one is better than the other the guy green is just more convenient than down the earth but as far as like plant growth and development they're pretty much i mean they're they're right here they're pretty much on point they're both great down the earth guy green it's all good stuff like i wouldn't put one over the other question number five max walcott asked what's the best piece of equipment that you use that most people don't have i have two right here i would probably say my sunblaster germination kit and my electric sky es 300s i do have two of them the sunblaster is the best because germination and the sea 
healing stage straight up sucks when you don't have the most optimal conditions. And the germ kit really helps keep you in the red zone. And the ES300s, I mean, need I say more? And I feel like a lot of people do have issues when it comes to germinating or sealing stage. How do I know this? Because everybody seems to blame the company. Oh, ILGM sucks. Oh, Mephisto sucks. My beans aren't popping. What's the other ones I hear? Nirvana sucks. Fast buds. I feel like if more people had the germination kit, they wouldn't have these kind of problems. So that would probably be the best piece of equipment. Just because it's not the most expensive piece of equipment does not mean it's not the best piece of equipment. So if you guys are looking for a germination kit, definitely grab one if you're having issues and stop blaming the company. So hopefully I answered your question, man. Question number six, Mike D asked, should I use bleach solution to clean my tent after a spider mite infestation? Oh yeah, man, absolutely. And even if you don't have a spider mite infestation, you always want to clean up your setup, whether you're in a tent, you're in a closet, or even if you're just in a dedicated room. You could use the alcohol swipes like you just mentioned. I've used the all-purpose spray cleaners, pretty much whatever's going to get the job done. Question number seven, Bandit and 2.0 asked, what fertilizer do you use currently? I'm running Gaia Green mixed with Pro Mix HP soil. I'll be messing around with the flower fuel on one of my plants, just kind of like a fun experiment. And I always use molasses for my cow mag. Really good stuff. You can also get iron with your molasses. Some people don't realize that, but calcium, magnesium, and iron for the win. You want to get that stuff, use that molasses. But before this run, we were using the down the earth dry amendments. Also really good stuff. Like I mentioned, I think like two questions ago, absolutely no complaints. Question number eight, Travis Wolf asked, <laughs> Travis Wolf, he's a familiar face on Patreon. Shout out to you, my man. Anyway, Travis asked, at what time in a plant's life is it considered a natural fade or deficiency when the leaves change colors? Now, if you ask me personally, I like to start getting that fade around week five of flowering, but it's still a deficiency no matter how you look at it. It's lack of nitrogen. I mean, that's really what the fade is. You know, that your plants are not producing that chlorophyll, which that's how they're losing that, that lush green color. That's how, you know, they're getting those yellow yellow leaves. It's still a deficiency no matter how you look at it. And I think that people, now I, I can't exactly say, but I feel like people don't really consider it a deficiency because it's purposely done. You, you know, you're purposely trying to get the fade. So people in their heads, they're not thinking, oh, it's still a deficiency, but it really is. People are purposely withholding that nitrogen, but everybody likes to start that fade at different times. I've seen some people tell me, you know, they like to start that fade around week four. Some people say week six. I like to be in the middle. I like to start that fade like around week five. Question number nine, Donald Husey asked, how do you dial in your drying area? On another note, when is the fishing vids dropping, bruh? Bruh. I use a top and warm mist humidifier with a sensor. The thing that I'm lucky about is that we have a super low humidity problem, which is good because with the sensor, you can dial in your humidity to whatever you want. And if it drops below that, your humidifier kicks right on. So you're essentially always maintaining that humidity that you want. Now for drying, I like to shoot between 50 to 55%. I always tell people 45 to 55%, but if you're really trying to dial it in, like you're trying to snipe dial in, I always like 50 to 55% humidity for drying. And for the fishing videos, they're probably not gonna drop. You know, maybe we'll have a nice few catches in the intro or something, bro. Question number 10, Wes Wickham asked, hopefully I pronounced that right. What will cause the small leaves in the bud to twist? Now, this could be a few different things. You could have an issue with broad mites. You could possibly have a boron deficiency, or if you're not growing organically and you're really relying on that pH, your pH could possibly be out of whack. I know when my pH would be off in the past, my leaves would start looking kind of wonky, like they wouldn't look normal. They would just, they'd start kind of doing this. So it could be a few different things. Question number 11, Chris Roa asked, when growing foam photos, do you have a light schedule for seedlings or do you leave them on 24 hours? Absolutely not on the 24 hours. I'm like so against it. And some people are going to disagree with me, but just hear me out. I've always felt like all living things need some kind of downtime. So I do have the LED strip on my Sun Blaster germination kit. I have that off at least a few hours a day. Usually when I go to bed at night, I'll turn the light off. And then when I get up, I'll turn them back on. Even if you're giving your plants like two to three hours of downtime, it's still something. I would not recommend this if you sleep 12 hours a day though, that could be a problem. Now I'm talking to all you guys that like to sleep until noon, all right? Question number 12, Craig Mayer asked for the best yield possible. Would you do a full grow inside or veg for a bit inside and then take them outside? 
outside. Back when I had plenty of more motivation, I would put it outside until I realized the bud rot that I'd get from all the rain in the northeast, which sucks by the way. So Mother Nature, thanks for that. I appreciate it. But seriously, nah, I just grow from start to finish inside. I could water my boxers and train without going outside. It's a win-win right there, right? Question number 13, Harley Cole asked, how are the rules about beans being sent by mail? It's considered a souvenir and nobody really cares about beans. Worst thing that happens is customs takes your beans, but you don't get in trouble or anything like that. And assuming the company you bought the beans from aren't a bunch of douche canoe jabronis, they'll more than likely be replacing your beans. Question number 14, John Smith asks, when would you first do the molasses and water for your soil? Anytime you want, man. I've done runs with the Fox Farm Ocean Forest and just unsulfured blackstrap molasses, one tablespoon per gallon of water ratio, every other watering and had really good yields. Even plants I was kind of just like whatever on. So one to two teaspoons per gallon of water, it's really forgiving. You don't have to, you know, be worried about it. Nothing's highly concentrated. It's pretty forgiving. You don't have to worry about giving too much. I mean, don't go over two tablespoons per gallon, but that should be fine. Thanks Apple for f***ing me up. Question number 15, Chris Owens asked, have you tried Mephisto genetics yet? And if so, what was your experience and would you recommend them? I got a whole bunch of Mephisto beans that people sent over to me. I think I have like at least 50 Mephisto beans and I plan on running them this fall. Actually, check it out real quick. All this stuff that I have over here is just somebody sent Mephisto beans. Someone else sent a whole bunch of Mephisto beans. I don't remember who you are. Your name was Alvarez, I think. Shout out to you, man. Like we got like, we got a ton of Mephisto genetic beans. So we're definitely gonna be running them around fall. That's pretty much what I'm gonna be shooting for. I'm currently running with Ethos and Exotic Genetics, but you know, everyone who I've talked to on here, Patreon, Discord, everybody seems to really love Mephisto. I heard nothing but great stuff from them. So I would recommend Mephisto based on what everybody's been telling me. And I haven't personally tried them, but I'm just going by what majority of people, I'm not talking about like one or two people telling me use Mephisto. There's a whole bunch of people telling me, oh yeah, Mephisto, you go, oh yeah, you gotta try them out. Same thing with Ethos, oh yeah, you gotta try them out. So I'm shooting for next fall. We do have a bunch of events we're gonna be going to, so I'm not sure when we're gonna be starting. So after this run, we're probably gonna be closing up shop for a few months and then we're gonna be going right back into it maybe in the fall time question number six J felt asked would you ever grow a mullet not a chance never in your life bro all right guys so that's gonna wrap up this episode of q a be on the lookout in the community section we're definitely i'm definitely gonna notify you whenever we're gonna be coming out with another q a drop your questions all that stuff so before we close off today's video i want to thank everyone on screen who's been supporting us on patreon really appreciate the love and support so i'm gonna close out today's video be sure to drop a fat thumbs up drop that fat like and subscribe for more content and I'll catch you guys in the next one and as always stay safe peace